Greetings and welcome to episode 27 of Chronicles of a Nonprofit. I'm Darina and we welcome you today. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing to this podcast. Thank you for sharing this information. So what do we want to talk about in the business realm today? Well, we're dealing with our clients and we're focusing on transparency. We're looking at communication barriers and things that can somehow distract a communicative relationship. It can be emotional. It can be something that may be um, the individual client, volunteer, staff, or contractor may be actually dealing with in their own personal lives. So we must be very, very careful when we are providing leadership, when we're providing guidance, when we're tapping into the intricate workings of how to make another individual their greatest version. So something came to me today. I was um, requested to speak to someone who was going through the grieving process. And as I am speaking and going through the concepts of this program that um, I created back in when I was getting my master's degree. It is Emotional Healing Solutions. And I talk about the 12 steps to recovery. But before we recover, we have to go through the thing that created the addiction in the first place, which is the emotion. So in creating the emotion, what happens is we tap into the inner workings of things that we never knew about who we were. And that's what tapped into my mind and my archive when I went back and I said, what am I going to be able to help this person get through? How am I going to help this person get through what I went through when I lost my son? And his birthday is on its way. And I still feel the energy of my son. And I look at death differently. I look at death as continual life. So that is the way that I get through my grief. Um, we do have youngsters at the community center that's dealing with grief on their terms. We have seniors who are dealing with grief on their terms. And no one person has the remedy to, you know, take to give to someone that this is the magic pill that you take when you're dealing with something specific as grief. And so what I did was I went to um, an article and I found that this was very, very interesting through the James Madison University. And so how can we help someone when they're going through grief? When we recognize that a person has just connected to the shock of losing a loved one, it is where we must be communicative as leaders to say, I am here for you. We can't take things personal, whether they lash out at us, that is being there for them. Whether they tell us that they need time alone and then they want to push away and then they want to come back to us within the same 15, 20 minute period of time. This is where we learn to not take it personal when dealing with individuals with grief. And I'm learning that because as I am working with a community-based aura of individuals, I'm looking that all people come with their own individual reasons for being who they are, why they're there being who they are at that particular time. So just understand that a good friend is going to listen and is not going to stifle the growth of the griefing process when it comes down to someone who has just recently gone through the process or is going through. The next thing is understanding that there's going to be some discomfort. People are going to say things, they're going to laugh, they're going to agree with you, but then they're going to have other things that they're going to say to you that's going to stick out 
and make you see there may be a void. There may be a an unconscious expectation of what is expected at this moment. When I lost my son, I was thinking that, oh, I'll see him walking down the street one day. Although I know that in my mind, psychologically, it could never have happened. But then I would see someone that looks like him, that walks like him. And as I turn and I look, oh, it's not him. But yet my mind was in that place where I just wanted to see the physicalness of, you know, the relationship, the physical. There's going to be times where we're going to look at our friends in there and we're going to say, they're really going through it. Their hair is disheveled. They haven't taken showers. Some people may deal with the grief stage for quite some time. And it is up to the leader to understand, but yet empower them to make sure that they take care of themselves, make sure that they eat, make sure that they're sleeping well, making sure that, you know, individuals are not just numbing the pain. Okay. These people who are in a grieving stage are going to want someone to talk to about their feelings. They're going to want to make sure that they're able to feel safe in communication to friends that are going to be there for the process. They're going to want to make sure that they're comfortable in sharing their deepest, darkest feelings and not being judged, not being taken advantage of, not being um, talked about from other people um, or anything like that. And it can go on. It can go on for days, for weeks, for months, for years. So we better be ready to have that communication. So what I want to do at the Youngstown Community Center is to invite those who are going through the process of grief, loss, whether it's a loss of a job, whether it's a loss of an animal, whether it's a loss of weight, whether it's a loss of a child, a mother, a loved one, a father, a cousin, it doesn't matter. Anyone who's lost whether it's a loss of a communication relationship that you had with a loved one. You know, you're not talking to auntie because you guys had a fight, a falling out. This is where we want to let you know that the Youngstown Community Center will be their supportive uh, peer um, connection and collaboration. And then we may have some professionals come in and discuss with us, you know, what their textbooks tell them, but yet on the flip side, we just want to be support. We want to be support. Uh, we don't want people to feel as though they're being um, trained or or responded to as just a study, okay? Now we want to also encourage our friends to be open about the grieving process with friends, family, and others who have grieved, um, encouraging them that it is okay to express the life of the individual that we're grieving or the, the, the life of the job. What did the job do for you when you were actually working there? How good was it? Not just that you got laid off or you got, you know, fired or, you know, the company, you know, collapsed and they're no longer in existence. But what did it do for you when you were there? Because that's where the strength is going to come from. You're going to learn the life of an individual who you can always sit back and think about the good times. Not saying that the bad times doesn't exist, but in the physical form, we deal with what is known, known as aura levels. And in these levels, what takes place is individuals are basically at the lowest vibration when they're at their weakest point. So the last thing you want to do is put grief with the root or the base of the emotional feeling because you'll never get to the essence of the heart. You'll never get to the essence of the, um, the connection to just being above the basics the basics to relationship. 
you'll never understand what it means to go through your crown chakra and heal and, and get to your Kundalini or get to your area where it all makes sense that life is spiritual and spiritual is life. You know, we're going to have some eclipses come into our lives. We're going to have some things that are not going to feel too good. We're going to have to recognize that this is a part of life and that it is not personal and that hurt people does, does not need to hurt other people. We need to learn that there are ways that we and services that we can go after to activate, you know, talking to a loved, um, to someone about a loved one who we really and truly miss. Now, in every state, there is a, uh, I guess it's like a, a resource number where you can call. In our state of Ohio, it's 211. Um, you could call like your local police department or any resource. It used to be the operator, you know, but that was many, many, many decades ago. But I don't even know if the operator exists anymore, but you can call zero and then you can ask them to provide you with your free resource service number, whether you have insurance or not. These individuals are there to talk to you about whatever it is you're experiencing. Okay. So if you're dealing with grief and loss and you just want to talk to someone that you can trust, because that's another thing during grief, others realize that they can see the weakness within you and they'll take advantage of the weakness. So please be mindful. Please be aware, be mindful of what is actually taking place in your heart space and who you're speaking your weakness too, because they can take advantage of that. And that's why confidentiality extremely is extremely important. So you can also call a counselor. You can call the public safety department, or you can call a suicide hotline if you do feel like you you just can't deal with it anymore. And the number is 1-800-273-TALK. When we are empowering another person through leadership, the next thing we need to do, according to James Madison University, is to empathize with the pain they're going through. We cannot say, I know how you feel. You can't take their pain away. You cannot make them feel that, you know, oh, get over it. You can't do that. What we can do is let them know that, you know, I've been here or I haven't been here. Tell me what it feels like. Tell me what your experience is, you know, and don't let them wallow in their, their, um, what word is that? Trauma, their trauma, because right there, they'll be so busy talking about the guilt, the shame, the, um, the loss of what they could have done or how it just, you know, if they were there for the moment, you know, it never would have happened. Whatever they have in their mind that they're saying when you empathize with this individual who is grieving, please let them know that nothing can take the pain away. They just have to go through it in order to see it and that they're not alone. That's really about all that can be done. Um, and be real when we communicate. Don't hide our feelings. So if this person is saying consistently, oh, I should have, would have, could have, you know, and you really feel like, you really want to tell them that no matter what, had they have been there, had they not been there, these things would have still took place. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry to hear that this happened to you, you know, um, and your intuition will guide you in the conversation. There is no right or wrong. It's just that when you do talk and when you do speak, Realize that you cannot take whatever it is you're about to say back. So think clearly, especially by putting yourself in the compassionate mode of the individual. Okay. And then listen and don't be judgmental. That's one thing I had to learn to let them tell their story, no matter how connected to your story it sounds. You know, some people would like to make up things in their head to make their loved one feel and look better than what they really were. And in their heart space, they're trying to give love to the um, the loved one. 
And that's what we want them to do. We want them to connect however they need to connect. I guess this is a time where I don't like to use this term, but faking it to make it. You know, if we have someone who has not been the best, who has not made the best decisions, who has, you know, never really given anything to anyone except for selfishness. It's very difficult to just say that and they're no longer here. Uh, you have no reason to physically dislike them because y'all had a little incident years back. But what you can do now is literally say, hmm, I remember they used to, you know, do this or that. That's what I used to love about what they would do. You know, no matter what, they would always come with a smile and a song, you know, something that uplifts them other than the selfishness thing that you could possibly say to the grieving individual about, you know, um, what could be done. Uh, please don't, don't assume things. Don't say, get over it. Don't say, oh, I've been through it. My, this person, that person do not claim to understand what they're going through. Do not take the focus away from them. Um, don't be selfish. Don't give advice about what your friend should or shouldn't be doing with his or her grieving process. Um, please don't pass judgment. Um, and then don't give grief a timeline. Don't do that. Encourage them to make the decisions for themselves, to empower themselves and to move forward so that they are able to, you know, grow. They're able to grow. They're able to understand. Just leave little seeds of positive energy. You know, I'm so grateful to see how you're handling this. You're doing so great. And, and, you know, I understand this is really emotional for you, but I'm going to check on you in another two weeks and see how far you've come, you know, things like that. As a leader, we have to show our emotional side sometimes. And, you know, it's, it's just a very, very valuable, valuable thing that we have. Um, don't forget the CARES Act. Don't forget that, you know, we all go through these processes and this is not a, you know, a topic that most people would like to talk about. However, in business as leaders, as empowering individuals, we're going to have clients that are in that mode. And when they come to us, we better be prepared, you know, and we have to get out our, you know, emotional handbook and we have to say, these are the rules. These are the guidelines of how I am to treat anyone who is going through something as severe as a loss, you know, whether it's a brand new, fresh loss or somebody who's two, three years in the game, it never really goes away. Um, it does become easier. And again, I remember going through my son's process, going through, you know, losing my son and I was too happy. Oh, I was too happy because I don't look at death like some most people do. I was very at peace with the fact that he no longer has to go through what I've gone through. What I, I did also realize that he's on the other end waiting for me to do what he has already done. So if he has already done it, he's eternal. I am temporary. I'm in a temporary state. So with those viewpoints and with thinking like that, it empowered me to get over the, it empowered me to heal faster. Because at that point, I was about healing. I wasn't about the traumatization. And when we realize that that's what it's about, living their life legacy after them, after they've gone on to wait for us, now it's time for us to give back to them in a positive light. So I thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. Today, we went over the grieving process and what some of the options are when we're dealing with a client as a leader in the area of business development 
And when they come to you with a different energy, when they come to you with the loss, how do you handle that? And these are things that we have to tackle in business as leaders. And I really would love for my entrepreneurs to be equipped and ready for all things. So if you're interested and you would like business coaching, please give me a call 330-956-0511 and I will start the process with you. And again, thank you so much for listening, commenting and subscribing and we will see you when we do. Peace.